Welcome back to CinemaScoop. Today we'll recap the popular comedy thriller, Nobody. Based on the main character's real-life experience, Bob Odenkirk conjured the idea of this movie after trapping intruders in his basement. When life gives you lemons, am I right? You don't want to miss a second of this exciting movie, so stay tuned. Spoilers ahead. The movie begins with a cuffed Hutch Mansell feeding a kitten from a can of tuna while being questioned. One of the interrogators asks who he is, but before we hear an answer, the movie jumps back to the past. Hutch lives a very mediocre life, and we see his tedious routine repeat day after day. As he lies in bed for yet another night with pillows as a makeshift wall between him and his wife, he stares at the ceiling before getting up, hearing weird noises. He checks on his kids before heading downstairs and spots two burglars. He takes a golf club from the bag, and as he's about to call 911, the burglars find him. The woman holding the gun nervously orders him to hand over all his money. He signals to a bowl with a few dollars in it, stating that he only uses a debit card. As she takes his watch, he notices a tattoo on her wrist. She orders him to give her his ring, but he refuses. Just then, his son Blake tackles the male burglar. She runs over and fearfully tells Blake to release him, threatening to shoot. Hutch creeps up behind her, about to wield a fatal blow, but something stops him, and he tells his son to let the man go. His son reluctantly obliges, and the man punches him in the face. As the man approaches Hutch, the woman anxiously suggests that they leave, and when she calls him baby, we learn that they are a couple. Hutch's wife, Becca, begs them to take whatever they want and go, and the burglars eventually do so. When Hutch offers to help Blake on his feet, Blake slaps his hand away, spewing a nasty remark at Hutch before heading back upstairs. The police arrive, and as they speak to Blake and Becca, we hear Hutch's inner dialogue. He blames himself for the burglary and jeopardizing his family's safety as he stares at the pizza box that the burglars wedged in the garage door to stop it from closing. The officer speaks to him, passively shaming him for not attempting to subdue the burglars and protect his family. Both Hutch and Becca lie awake before he heads down to the basement couch, and his daughter Abby joins him since she's having trouble sleeping. She shares that she doesn't feel scared because he's there to protect her, and before dozing off to sleep, she suggests they get a cat. In the morning, Blake asks Hutch if he could interview him for his history report on a veteran. Hutch agrees but states that his position was that of a nobody and would make for a very dry story. Becca suggests Blake's uncle, impulsively stating he was a real soldier. As she regretfully takes it back, Hutch tells her she's not wrong. Not caring for his father's feelings, Blake makes it known that that was his first option but received no response from his uncle. Hutch suggests his dad, who was also a soldier that had seen lots of action. Blake, annoyed by his docile father, leaves the table. Abby gives Hutch a hug and they all head out. Hutch converses with the neighbor who heard about the break-in. Pointing to the neighbor's car, Hutch attempts to change the subject and we learn that the neighbor got it from his father, who recently died. Blake hops into Becca's car and the neighbor leaves to test how fast his new car can go. As Hutch enters his workplace, he sees a co-worker struggling to find an animal hiding on the roof. Charlie, Becca's brother, confronts him about the burglary after hearing from Blake that he made no effort to subdue the intruders. He forces Hutch to take a gun, warning him to keep his sister safe. Hutch stashes the gun in an empty box in the fridge, and as he's returning to his office, Becca's father stops him to talk about the burglary as well before quickly moving on to Hutch, wanting to buy the building. He expresses his concern about selling something he worked so hard to build for so little money. Back in his office, Hutch tunes his radio to a station that allows him to talk with his adopted brother, Harry. He compliments Harry on his improvements on the trumpet, and we learn that Harry has a lot of time to practice since the public considers him officially dead. They talk about the burglary, and Hutch confesses to not wielding the blow because he noticed the gun was empty. Harry advises Hutch not to do anything stupid pertaining to the situation. After, Hutch leaves to visit his father, David, who immediately notices that his son is not okay. Hutch stares at a family photo while his father reminisces on who they used to be. At his house, Hutch watches his family through the window before heading inside. Abby shares that she's missing her bracelet, which was in the money bowl the burglars raided. With that being the last straw, Hutch heads back to the nursing home. He takes some of his father's clothes, his old FBI badge, some money, and a loaded revolver. His father creeps up behind him and encourages him to go do what he has to do. Hutch travels to various tattoo shops, flashing his dad's FBI badge to get answers about the burglar's wrist tattoo. At the last tattoo shop, a bystander notices that the badge on the ID expired about 20 years ago. The owner, sporting brass knuckles, questions Hutch about who he is, which alerts his men. He offers money in exchange for a name, and the bystander recognizes Hutch's wrist tattoo. He jumps to his feet, thanking Hutch for his service before fearfully heading to another room and locking all the bolts on the door. 
His reaction prompts compliance in the owner, and he quickly gives Hutch info on the burglar's location. As they're about to eat, Hutch breaks into the burglar's home and attacks the man. Holding the man at gunpoint, he retrieves his watch and questions them about the bracelet. When they refuse to hand it over, Hutch knocks the man over and threatens to shoot. The commotion frightens the baby and Hutch heads to the other room. He sees a sick baby and leaves after deducing that they stole to support their child. Needing to release some rage, he punches the wall before heading home. On his way, a group of drunk men crash a car next to the bus. The bus driver stops and reluctantly opens the door for them to board. They crowd around a female passenger, and we see Hutch smile, excited to get some action finally. He guides the driver off the bus, determined to fight them off so the girl can get home safely. One of the men alerts his friends after noticing that Hutch hasn't left. Hutch threatens to beat them up and one of them decides to take him on. The others eventually join in and he overpowers them before being stabbed. He wraps his watch around his knuckles, removes the knife from his side and attacks them all before being thrown out the window. As the men whine about their injuries, Hutch heads back onto the bus. After picking up the knife, he orders the girl to run and finishes them off. Noticing that one of the men is reloading his gun, he takes a pole and beats him with it, crushing his windpipe in the process. Hutch uses the knife to open a hole in the man's throat, inserting a straw to allow him to breathe. He apologizes to the driver about the mess and then heads home. We see his wife, Becca, waiting for him, and she questions where he went. He stands in the light, showing his injuries and bloodied clothes. She cleans up his stab wound, and before heading to bed, he confesses to missing the intimacy and emotional connection that they haven't had in years. While he sleeps, Becca removes the pillow wall for the first time in a long time. Yulian Kuznetsov, a Russian mobster, heads to his bar, recklessly crossing the road. He joins the performer to dance and complete her song before heading upstairs. People around him applaud, except for one man who means mugs him, but Yulian chooses to ignore this. He meets with a few other men to discuss the security of Abshak. They admit to being satisfied with it, but one of them believes that Yulian cannot inspire confidence when he's seen dancing and singing. To prove this incorrect, he smashes a wine glass and mauls the mean mugger before killing him. Just then, he receives a phone call alerting him that his little brother is in the hospital. As Yurian cries in the hospital, we learn he is family to one of the men that Hutch beat up. After learning that his brother Teddy may never walk again, he confronts one of Teddy's friends about the people who did this to his brother. Yulian doesn't believe that one man was capable of this, so he tries to beat the truth out of him. He questions how he can find Hutch, to which another one of Teddy's friends weakly raises Hutch's Metro card. We see a much more perky Hutch expressing to his son how proud he is of bravely tackling one of the burglars. Harry calls him to inform him that he now has a problem after messing with the family member of a dangerous Russian mobster. He advises Hutch to ask the barber for more information about Yurian before Hutch hangs up. At work, he receives messages from Harry advising him to talk with the barber and eventually agrees. The barber hands over a document already prepared with Yurian's information since he expected Hutch to stop by. He tells Hutch that Yurian is as bad as they come, a sociopath with connections to get whatever he wants. We see Yurian conversing with a hacker he's hired to retrieve information on Hutch, but she's unable to find anything, so she resorts to blackmailing a worker at the Pentagon. The barber enlightens Hutch on the Abshak, hundreds of millions of dollars owned by the Russian mob that Yurian is entrusted to protect. The barber believes Yurian would gladly walk away from the burden of protecting the money if he could. Back at the Pentagon, the worker sends over everything to Hutch, and the hacker gives it to Yurian, immediately quitting as she does not want to be caught in the crosshairs of the battle against someone as dangerous as Hutch. At the house, Hutch and his family are about to have dinner when he notices men arrive outside. He rushes his family to the basement and kisses his wife for the first time in a long time before urging her not to call 911 and then locking them in. The men break in, and he takes them down one by one before he's electrocuted with a taser. They stuff him in the trunk and head back to Urian. When he wakes, he breaks a thumb so that he can pull one hand out of the handcuffs. He pulls the lever to open the trunk, looks out, and then closes it again. He then pulls the fire extinguisher out of its compartment, kicks the foldable chair down and sprays it in the car, blinding the driver and causing them to crash. Hutch exits the trunk and heads to the front for the key to unlock the handcuffs. The last living abductor has been impaled by a part of the car, and Hutch tells him that he used to be an auditor and that the government would call for assassination. However, the man dies before Hutch can finish his story. He runs home and gives his dad a heads up about the Russian men he pissed off. He lets his family out of the basement and they stare in shock at the carnage around them. Becca speaks with him in hopes that he'll tell her what's going on, but he refuses, asking her to trust him blindly this one last time. She agrees and takes the kids away to a safe place. We see Hutch pile stacks of money and gold into a duffel bag before grouping the men onto the couch in the basement. He tells them about his last mission, where he was ordered to take out a man who stole $3 million from the U.S. military base in Italy. The man's pleading was that of a genuinely regretful man, and Hutch took the chance to let him go. 
When Hutch checked back on him a year later, he saw a truly reformed man, living happily with a beautiful family and working an honest job. Craving what the man had, Hutch retired to try to build a family of his own. However, before he can finish his story, he realizes that all the men are dead, and again, no one is listening. Just then, he spots Abby's kitty cat bracelet under the chair. Although the men are dead, he tells them the basement is designed to burn at double the heat required to disintegrate bone, leaving no trace. He admits to himself that he knew the life he was living was only a facade, then lights the fire. As the house burns down, he steals his neighbor's new car and drives away. At the nursing home, two men sneak in to kill David, but he kills them both with a shotgun, aware that they were coming. At Hutch's workplace, he gives Eddie all the gold and cash as payment for the place, and Eddie finally accepts. After watching the news on the death of his henchman, Urian makes a call requesting all his men. Hutch sets multiple traps in his new building before speaking with Harry, who's angry that he endangered himself by picking a fight with a dangerous mob. He refuses to come out of hiding to help Hutch, and Hutch cuts him off by changing the station. He heads over to Urian's hideout, killing all the men and burning all the money in the obshock. He then heads over to Urian's bar, where Urian spots him after he finishes his performance. They surround him, and after spotting the bomb, Urian orders all his men to leave the room. He tells Urian that he burned every bit of the money as revenge for sending men to his home. He then offers Urian two options, one to try to kill Hutch but still be left with the burden of refinancing the Obshock, or two, to take the chance to finally escape the Obshock by changing his identity and running away to the Caribbean. Hutch then heads out to his car, where he crosses his fingers in hopes that Urian will choose to attack him. Excited that the chase is on, he smiles when Urian fires at him, leading them to his trap-riddled building. Urian shoots him in the shoulder before he can enter, but Harry and David come to his aid, offering him covering fire. He heads inside, surprised to see them, and David confesses how much he's missed the action. The three of them successfully take down Urian's crew together with different tactics and traps, before Harry is shot in the shoulder by Urian. As they hide, Hutch realizes they've run out of ammo. He hatches a plan to eliminate Urian, taping the bomb to the front of a glass shield and deploying it after running towards him. Urian immediately dies from the impact, and they all embrace each other. David and Harry leave after hearing sirens and Hutch calls Becca, thanking her for allowing him to live this facade to escape his old life. He promises to make things right this time, and as he's about to leave he finds the animal hidden in the building. It's a baby kitten, and he pockets some canned tuna before the police capture him. We return to the beginning scene, and Hutch tells the officers he's a nobody when they question who he is. They both receive a mysterious phone call and their faces drop when they're informed about who Hutch is. He's immediately released, and three months later we see a realtor giving Becca and Hutch a tour of a new house. Just then, the realtor receives a phone call and is ordered to hand the phone over to Hutch. He listens to the caller before hanging up. Already aware of the details of the phone call, Becca asks the realtor if the house has a basement, and the movie ends. Subscribe to CinemaScoop so you never miss the latest movie explanations, reviews, and analyses. Thanks for watching.